Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at defining an isotropic multilinear material model. Remember, in my previous video, I mentioned that the sources of uh, nonlinearity in simulations are large deformations, changes in context, and nonlinearity in material. So here we're going to talk about nonlinearity in material and uh, when the material's behavior goes plastic and it changes, in reality, uh, the material's behavior is not going to uh, be uh, over a line anymore. And mostly it is a curve. So what you will have is going to be something like this. You have the linear region and then in the uh, nonlinear region, you're going to have a curve like that. Okay, but... Uh, since modeling this in, for simulation is not necessarily easy and you have to have all the points, right? You need a ton of data here to uh, basically perform the FEA. Instead, you are showing this curve with a bunch of tangent lines, right? So basically, you model the plastic region with several of these lines. So we call it multilinear. And it's isotropic means the properties of material are the same in different directions. A simpler version of that exists where you call it bilinear. So you only have one linear region and then you have what? One line for the plastic region. But that is uh, quite a bit far from reality. I would say this multilinear is a little bit more accurate. And what you need for this, in addition to the initial slope of the stress versus the strain, which is the Young modulus, and uh, this point here, which is the uh, sigma y, correct? So you need E and sigma y. In addition to that, you need some new slopes for these consequent li uh, subsequent lines, and you need some new breakpoints, right? New corner points. So you need some new... Uh, corner points or you can define them by the corresponding strain that they have and the slope of the lines okay so you can define that multi-linear material that way and this is kind of like a, a doable method for performing nonlinear uh, material simulations so what i have here is uh, this uh, simple um, 2d uh, sheet metal with a circular hole and I have a fix a support on one end and I have applied a displacement on the other end which I'm going to talk about and then here uh, the stress in this material is going to go to 280 megapascal and for structural steel clearly the yield point is 210 so we are clearly in the plastic region now, the way that you define the nonlinear uh, properties, it is in the uh, engineering data. So you double click on the engineering data, and then this is the structural steel. So what you need to add is this multilinear isotropic hardening, which you can find under plasticity. So normally, when you go, that one is not there, right? So let me show you. Uh, when you go here and add something, right? Typically, the model is just linear isotropic, but you can add that plasticity here. So look here, when I go here, you see, the plastic thing is not here. I just have linear isotropic. What I can do is I go here under this plasticity tab, and then I choose one model. And as I said, one of the simple models that you can apply is multilinear isotropic hardening. This is the bilinear, the simpler version. And then there are nonlinear methods, okay? But this is like a power law. So you still provide the function here, right? Or this is the Wos law, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. So there are different models. There is an AND model. There is this Chabochi, if I'm not uh, mistaken it, right? There are so many models based on the, the ones pro proposed by different people. And each one is applicable to some kind of material. So it's not like... It's one model fitting all, right? So if I double click on this multilinear, you see now that one is added to under my structural steel, let's say. And the things that you need to do is the normal working temperature for the test. And then you need some data for what? 
for the corner points and uh, basically the uh, amount of stress for them. So what you do is, instead of defining these points with uh, the strain and the slope, what you do is you only define what? You only define the points using the stress and strain. And uh, then ANSYS automatically will connect the points using lines. So what you do for each one of these points, you define the amount of strain and the amount of stress in them. Right, and then ANSYS would connect these points uh, consequently with what? With uh, basically um, a bunch of lines, okay? So here, for example, at the strain of uh, 1,000, 1 over 1,000, you have some number, and 2 over 1,000, you have another 3 and 4, right? So this is what I do. I go to this uh, table. And then I start typing the numbers, okay? So at zero, let's say you are at 250, at 0.01, you are at 265, and so on and so forth. So you provide those data points, the strain and the stress for them, and it gives you this multilinear behavior, as you can see here, right? So once that behavior is set, then I make sure that I change my analysis to 2D instead of 3D because that's a simple problem. I go to my model and I set up the conditions and then run the test. So what I did here is I created a mesh and made sure that I have applied refinement near what? Near the fix uh, support, near the place that the force is applied and near the concentration of stress. I applied the small mesh size so it is a, a good mesh in this case. I applied the fixed support, as I said, on this end and a displacement this time instead of a force on the right end. And this displacement here, uh, as you can see, the X component is with tabular data. So between zero and one second, which is the end of simulation, I move the right end, pull it for 1.2 mils. And I calculated this such that the stress goes into the plastic region. I uh, basically, this is enough to make it go to the plastic region. And uh, then under the analysis setting, you see I only have one step here because I just want to uh, pull it from the initial situation. I have my auto time stepping on. I have the smaller uh, sample, a uh, smaller step time here compared to the initial one. So minimum is 0.01 and maximum and initial are 0.1. And I made sure that the large deflection is on. Okay. And then, uh, by the way, another way that you might say, where does this number come from, right? 1.2, Where? why did you choose that number? Well, the dimension here, this maximum dimension here is 300 mil. So if you divide that 1.2 by that 300 mil, the strain is going to be 0 0.004, which is basically this number here. Okay, so I can reduce it a little bit, and I'm still going to be what? Inside this uh, uh, linear region. So as long as the displacement is more than 0 0.001, right? Or in our case, more than 0.3 millimeters, uh, hopefully, if everything is accurate, then I should be in the plastic region. So here I did it to be high up in the stress region. And you see that when I calculated my stress, you see, it's toward the very top. It's toward 280 as it's kind of predicted here. Okay, so the stress is clearly in the plastic region. And then I calculated total deformation. I calculated the stress and the strain for one node where the node is exactly here where it is maximum. Okay, so I chose a node. In the down here and up here are symmetric. So I chose a node up here, which is like the maximum stress. I calculated the stress for it, the strain for it, and I plotted them versus each other. And here you can see that multi-linear behavior, as you can see, right? This is the first area, and then the second one and the third one. You can see all the lines here. And the other thing is I could also calculate with a probe how much force I need to uh, pull this guy 1.2 mils to the right side. And it also shows you uh, the force. So you see for the force, I chose a probe, right? I went to insert a uh, probe and then a force reaction. 
and then it is asking you what is it and you say that displacement what displacement the one that you applied on the right hand side that is going to give you what the amount of force you need to perform such operation and this is the plot of that force as you can see where uh, the force is going to go up to 1.1 1 .1, um, 10 to the 5 right or about 110 thousand newton is the amount of force you need to uh, stretch the right hand side for 1.2 mils and this is also the uh, deformation at the true scale if you want you can change it and make it a little bit bigger and uh, you can see it okay and clearly you're going to go to the plastic region so hopefully this uh, simple video was enough to tell you how to set up the uh, material condition for a, a multilinear uh, plastic or nonlinear uh, part, the material. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next video.